Hey, it's Tommy Gunn from Cracked Rabbit Gaming, and I'm going to show you how to do the classic pull a book off of a bookcase and have it slide open and reveal a hidden passage. Uh, and we're going to do this in RPG Maker VX Ace, and it's actually pretty easy to do. This was requested on the forum. Someone asked for help on this. Um, so, first of all, I'm going to use an event, uh, an event graphic, to do the bookcase. And if you don't know how to make those, I have a, a video on sprite formatting, so you can go watch that. Um, but even if you don't want to make your own graphic for that, you can still follow along with this and just use one of the doors that they have. So I have uh, this just crappy house that I made quickly. Um, and here's just this big room. So first we're going to put the secret passage in. And so I'm just going to use this, it might be hard to see on this video, but it's just this small, whoops, <laughs> that's the wrong tool, uh, just this small little uh, doorway thing. Um, my characters are Mac characters, so they're actually bigger than this, but that's okay. Um, I'm going to have this be like a tunnel that he crawls through rather than an actual door. If you want to do a, like a full door, if you're using larger characters, then you'll have to make event graphics that cover that up unless, you know, for some reason you want it to be seen at the top. But um, because of the way I have my objects on here, you see that they only actually cover up the this first row. So if you have a door that goes up here, you'll you'll be able, able to see it. Um, okay, so now we have our secret passage, and it doesn't have a tr uh, teleport in there yet or anything like that. But that's okay. We'll do that later. So now let's make the first bookcase to cover this up. So we'll just add an event there and add a graphic. So like I said, if you don't want to use uh, your own graphics, you can go and just use some of the default things. So you'll see like door three, this has some large doors here. So you can just pretend that these are bookcases. Um, so you could use, you know, this one or whatever you want, a door. But I already made one. So as you can see, this is really minimal. Uh, you know, normally there'd be animation for a character and the different directions that they're facing. So I just was really lazy and I just uh, copied it from, from the, the default tile set, but I made it an event graphic, a sprite. So I'm just going to select that one, and because all that other stuff is empty, we have to make sure we turn off walking animation and we turn on direction fix, so it'll always show that graphic no matter what, um, no matter if we you know, activate it from the side or uh, when it's moving, it's not going to change directions and, and mess up the graphic. And we have it set on the same as characters and action button, which is what we want. We want to be able to click on this one, and I'm going to name this uh, bookcase1. And because this is the one we want to click on, I'm, you know, you could add some text if you want to say, you know, you found there's a loose book in here or there's a something, something, whatever. Um, I'm just going to do this quickly and say pull book or cancel. Uh, you can make this more elaborate if you want. And when you pull the book, I want this to move. So what I'm going to do is add a move root in here. So we're going to go to page two, set move root, and it is this event since we are clicking on this. If you want, you can, you can have this activate from a switch from the other side of the room or from a different room if you want. Um, and that way, if, if you did that rather than choosing this event uh, because you'd be activating it from a switch, you'd, uh, well, you would see bookcase one in this list, so then you'd choose bookcase one. But we are activating this actual event, so we're just going to say move left because uh, that's the way I want this bookcase to slide. I'm going to add another one. Um, and so that's fine. I'm going to turn off wait for completion and I'll explain why in a minute. But first, let's go add the second bookcase here. So I'm going to add the second one because I want these to s slide in opposite directions and kind of open up to reveal it, even though I actually only have um, the one tunnel. So this one's actually not going to uncover anything. But if you want to make a, a bigger tunnel or a bigger passageway, you can do that too. Um, but this was part of what the, the forum person requested was having uh, multiple objects sliding. So. Um, so again, turn off walking animation, turn on direction fix, and this one, we're actually not going to do anything with this event, um, but I am going to name it, so bookcase2, um, so this other stuff doesn't matter. 
uh, you know, you could add some text just saying there are a lot of interesting books here or whatever. Um, so remember, once we're actually playing this game, these events are going to be larger and they're going to cover up that hole, but it's not going to show it in this, in this view. Um, so now I'm going to go back to this first one because now we want to move that second event too. So now I'm going to add another event after that, set move root, this time choose bookcase 2, and then I'm going to move that one to the right, and now I can leave wait for completion um, if I want to keep the player from moving uh, while this is happening. And you just want to make sure that when you're doing multiple move routes and you want things to move at the same time, make sure the wait for completion is on the very last move route, because that way this one will move and then it'll immediately start moving this one, so it, it'll happen at the same time. But then it'll wait for the second one to, to actually move all the way. If you had wait for completion on the first event, it would move this first one to the left, wait for it to move to the left, then it would go to the next one, and then it would move the second one to the right. But we want it to happen at the same time. So make sure that's how you have it. Um, so that, uh, we can just test this out now and make sure this is working. So I will play test this. And we can go up here, and we can get cancel, or we can pull book. And there you go, and they slide open, but we're not done yet. Um, so as you can see, my character can <laughs> sort of walk into this hole a little bit, and that's a little weird. And there's another glitch, which is that I can activate this from the side, and another thing is I can activate this again, <laughs> so I can keep moving these, and now that's, that's all there, they'll go. Um, and that's a little weird, uh, that's not really what we want, so let's fix those things. Um, so first of all, well, I can add an event here for the transfer, and because I don't want him to walk, actually walk through it, because that looks weird because of how big he is, I'm going to make this same as characters, and I'm going to make this as player touch. You could do active, you know, a, um, action button if you want. And then I'll just say, uh, you know, crawl through hole. And then we can add our choices, yes, no. And then we can add a, a transfer to wherever we're going. And we can add, you know, fade out, music, sound effects, whatever you want to do. Um, I don't, I'm not actually going to add the other room, but um, just put that there and you can fill it in with whatever you want. So now there's those other bugs that I mentioned. So to, to prevent activating it from the side, what we can do, this is just a little trick I figured out on the game I made. Um, you can add an event here and make it below characters and action button. And this will take priority because you're actually standing on this event. Um, it'll do, it'll, take over so then even though you are if you are facing the bookcase um, standing here and facing this way since you're on an event it'll trigger this one and it won't trigger that one so um, but you actually have to have something here so you can either put some text in here and say um, you know you can't reach the books from here whatever you want um, but you can also just add like a one frame wait and that's enough to have this do something <laughs> So that should prevent uh, our character from being able to activate it from the side. But um, because there's an event here, this shouldn't, uh, shouldn't be able to move across that. So just to make sure it does, we're going to add this move root. We're going to put uh, through on. And then at the end, we're going to put through off. So it turns through on so it can move through events. And then we're going to move, and then we're going to turn through off. So that's simple. Um, we don't need that for this one because this is an empty space here. And we also don't have to worry about the character being in the way because now the only place your character can stand is right in front because uh, you won't be able to activate it from here. Otherwise, we'd run into problems. And if for some reason you wanted to do that, you could just add another mover to move the player down before you slid the books across or whatever. So let's test this to make sure this is working. 
And so nothing happens when you click there. Nothing happens when you click here. And this still works. And there it goes, still moves. And now if I go up and touch that hole, it asks me. And well, it doesn't really matter what I choose since I didn't add anything in there. But now uh, this bug is still here where we can keep pulling it. And now because we have through on, that <laughs> will keep moving through these other objects. And now I'm actually frozen uh, because we wanted to wait for completion on with that one. Uh, so we are going to change that. And now when we uh, pull the book, we're going to, and they move across, we're going to set a switch. So control switches and whatever, just add one. Um, bookcase open. Or bookcase is open. <laughs> and that's on. So bookcase is open is on. So now uh, we know that that's happening. But of course, that doesn't actually do anything yet. So we can either add another page if we want to, or we can just uh, put a condition, a conditional branch in here. So that's what I'm going to do. So I don't have to mess with multiple pages. Conditional branch. Um, go and choose that switch that we added. So if it is on, it'll do something else. It'll do something else. Uh, else, but actually, I'll just put this uh, start off with it off because that's how you normally will get to it. So I'm gonna cut that stuff out and paste it up here. So when we first start the game, the bookcase is gonna be closed. So bookcase is open is off, and then it'll do this stuff, and bookcase is now open, and then we can copy this stuff again and paste it, but we will have it move the other way. So we'll delete that, move right, delete that one, move left, and now uh, we actually might run into trouble because you could activate this from the wrong side again, but let's just finish this first. So book, uh, bookcases open is now off. And so now we should be able to move them back and forth as we keep clicking on it. So we'll pull the book, pull the book again, and they close. And that is exactly what we want. And we can't activate it from there, but we can activate it from here. And then <laughs> some weird stuff happens. So that's an issue. Um, so to solve this problem, what we're going to do is we're going to actually add a script call in. And that actually means we don't need this event anymore. Um, but I did just want to show you that so you'd know how to do that uh, in simpler events. Um, so what we're going to do is we are going to add a condition around this, this whole thing to check for the player's direction. And so that'll always be active. And so we're going to add a conditional branch and go to the last page and go to script. And then I already have this on my clipboard. So it's dollar sign game underscore player dot direction equals equals eight. So it's checking if the game, uh, the player's direction is equal to eight, which is up. Um, basically, if you look at like your number pad on your keyboard, 8 is up, 4 is left, 6 is right, 2 is down. It kind of follows that. So uh, we don't need uh, that checked. We don't need the else condition. So we're just going to hit OK. And so of course, that's all the way at the top. So now we need to highlight this whole thing, uh, cut that out, paste it in there. So now if you try um, clicking on it from any other direction, uh, even, you know, if you were above it somehow, which you can't be, but uh, it wouldn't work. It only, it's first going to check to make sure you're facing up. And then if you're facing up, it'll give you these options that we already have. So that should be all we need to fix that. Um, so now let's test this out and make sure. So of course we can pull it. And now if we click from the right side, it doesn't work. And if we click from the left side, it doesn't work. 
but if we click from the bottom, it works. So there you go. Now, the one thing I didn't show is actually going through here and going onto another map. And if you do that, your events might uh, reset their positions. So if you have it open, which of course it is if you're going through here, or if you leave it, uh, you know, you leave your house from the regular doorway or something, and you come back in, these are, the bookcases will be closed again. That might be what you want. Maybe uh, you can just justify it as like it's on a timer or something, or once you crawl through the hole, there's a switch that the character, you know, to close it behind him or something like that. Um, otherwise, you can use Shaz's uh, remember event position script to save the position of those. And of course, uh, if you don't save the position of these and that's uh, the switch that we set um, to remember if it's open or closed, that switch isn't going to get reset on its own, uh, even if the events get reset. So you will have to, you know, if you do want it to just automatically close, you'll have to remember to change that switch as well. But that should be uh, everything you need. And of course, this is just the starting point. You can add flourishes to this and add more text and whatever. And, you know, you could add a second doorway here and just copy the uh, the event over or something so that it's a bigger hole to walk through or crawl through or whatever it is you want to do. So I hope that helped. Uh, please like and subscribe. Thanks.